Hi guys, I'm Dean Stewart with Great Plains, and we're going to talk about hooking up the power directly to the battery and uh, cab harness installation. I've got a cab harness here in my hand. You can see off the one end I've got two red and two black wires. These wires need to go directly to the battery to get power for the monitor. Now you may also have additional connections that need to go to the battery, such as if you have RoPro air compressors or TrueCount air compressors on the planner. As you can see here, I've got the, these connections as well. There's a large fuse on these as well. Both harnesses or all harnesses need to run under the cab <clears throat> in a place that they will not be pinched or will not rub on any additional things. Um, a note on this with some of the newer tractors that may or may not have air ride cabs. Um, there sometimes is a lot of space, but sometimes some moving parts underneath there to keep an eye on those. Once we get connections connected directly to the battery, as always red to red, black to black, need to make sure we have good clean connections on the terminals here and that we have good power. One other connection you'll have is on the cab harness itself. There's a coil of orange wire. This is, uh, needs to go to the accessory port in the cab. Now you may be able to use a pigtail, a turn pigtail such as this, depending on the make and model of the tractor that you have. You can see that the orange wire is actually labeled with an ignition tag on it. It does need to be a keyed hot so that when the tractor is turned off, the monitor system will power down pro appropriately. You can see I've got the monitor mounted here in the side of the cab on my side window. It's a good place for it because it gets it out of my visual range as far as my ability to see out of the cab window. Now, the other good place in this tractor, for an example, would be the A post here in the front right corner of the cab. You may or may not have that option depending on the make and model of tractor you have. You'll notice the CFM, the clutch fold module here, the switch box is mounted underneath the screen. We do supply multiple brackets that can be used to mount that. This particular bracket I've got is the one that's on there now, and it's probably the one we recommend most because it puts the switch box right at the screen. However, there are other mounting options available to mount the box and the screen separately. As far as mounting the screen goes, we do ship a RAM mount with all the monitors and it will be in the box. <clears throat> I just ask that you put the screen in a place that gives you good visibility from the cab, but also allows you easy access to the screen. I want to back up just a minute when I talked, we talked about hooking power directly to the battery and I mentioned this round pigtail. Depending on the make and model of tractor, that orange wire that we spoke about earlier, need to make sure that we hook this to an accessory power port in the cab. In this tractor, for this example, the accessory port is behind me in the back corner of the cab. I'm Steve Lynch here at Great Plains Manufacturing. After we have the terminal mounted successfully in the cab and the cab harness hooked to power and everything's fired up, the last thing we need is GPS. That GPS can come from any third party receiver brought in and most of the time we'll connect that to the serial port cable of the cab harness itself. Now there's a couple of solutions there available that we have that we recommend. If you have a John Deere tractor, we have a harness, part number 467980461. This plugs to the green globe outside the cab, the Starfire 3000, then we bring it back into the cab via a serial port cable. Serial port cable connected to our serial port cable is like connecting two pieces of computer equipment together, so it may require what's known as a no modem. A no modem basically is a way of if it, it tying two pins together that are actually linked together with two serial ports and allows us to get GPS, which will now show on your screen when it's brought in there. If you have the John Deere, you're going to go to the serial port tab on the Starfire 3000 and then you're going to hit and we're going to have our 5 hertz rate that we need to output and we need 19,200 as a baud rate and the NEMA messages that we're looking for is GGA, VTG and ZDA. That's the three we're looking for. Check all three of those and then we should have GPS lit up from the globe that's going to show on screen. If you have a case or a New Holland tractor, your cable that you have as a dealer is actually a service tool that plugs into the nav controller. 
That's a Deutsch connector that plugs into the bottom of the nav behind the seat. And once again, we'll bring it up to our terminal with the serial port connection here. That part number is a 38002422. And likewise, that would be used on either the Pro 700 or the Intelliview 4. Either one of those, you go into the toolbox, you hit the nav tab at the bottom, and then you have NEMA output, and we're going to set it for 5 hertz rate, 19,200, and then we're going to enable the NEMA sent messages that we're looking for, which is GGA, VTG, and ZDA. Any other third-party receiver, that's what we're looking for.